Welcome everyone. I'm Ignacio Guilo. Um, uh, I am the, the moderator for today's event. Uh, I'm delighted to, to, to welcome you and particularly the speakers for today's event, Bridget Lynch, Carla Levy, Cara Levy and Carlos Gamerro. So uh, Bridget is currently a, a visiting fellow at CLAX. She completed her PhD at the University of St. Andrews in 2018 with a thesis that was awarded the annual publication prize of the Association of Hispanists in, 2000 and, um, in, in 2019. Uh, has been recently published as a monograph by Legenda with the title Horizontalism and Historicity in Argentina, Cultural Dialogues of the Post-Crisis Era. And we're going to talk a lot about that book today. And Cara Levy is a lecturer at the Department of Hispanic Studies at the University College Cork. Cara's main research interests lie in the field of memory studies and the Southern Cone, with a particular interest in sites of memory, the connection between memory and justice, second generation memory, and more recently, diasporic exile memory. She has published extensively on this and related matters, including the monograph Fragile Memory, Shifting Impunity, Commemoration and Contestation in Post-Dictatorship Argentina and Uruguay. Last but not least, we have Carlos Gamerro. Carlos is one of the most important living writers in Argentina. His publications, many of which have been translated into English, include the novels Las Islas, El Sueño del Señor Juez, La Aventura de los Bustos de Eva, Un Yupi en la Columna de Che Guevara, Cardenio, and La Jaula de, las, de los Zonas, as well as the book of short stories El Libro de los Afectos Raros, and several uh, literary studies. He is taught literature at the University of Buenos Aires, and in 20, 2007 was visiting fellow at Cambridge University. In 2008 and 2019, he participated in the International Writers' Workshop at, uh, in Iowa. So after the interventions of the speakers, we have time for questions. Uh, for the audience, you can use either the, the chat function or you can post your question directly to the speakers, I will be keeping an eye on the chat. If you want to just ask your question uh, orally, uh, raise your virtual hand and wait until I say your name. Uh, and please try, everybody, please try to keep your comments, your observations, your questions short so we have time uh, for uh, a lot of discussions. Uh, we have to finish in an hour, right? So yeah, uh, that's it. So over to you, Bridget. That's great. <clears throat> Thanks very much, uh, Ignacio. And um, uh, to begin with, I, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming to join us for this discussion today. Um, and I can see a lot of uh, familiar faces and it. it's very nice to, to, to see everyone. Um, and um, I'm really looking forward to talking about the issue, some of the issues that the book raises, and also the, the broader issue of the cultural legacy of the 2001 crisis in, in Argentina. And um, also, I want to thank our, our speakers um, uh, and our fantastic uh, moderator, uh, Ignacio uh, Garan and Carlos, uh, for taking part in uh, what, as I say, I'm sure will be a fascinating discussion. Um, and it's a really great honour to, uh, to be speaking alongside them. Um, and, and also a big thank you to colleagues at the at CLAX um, and the Institute of Modern Languages Research at the University of London, who helped me to organise this, this event and are really grateful for their support. Um, I, I, I keep it brief, I, I don't want to speak for very long, but to begin with, I just thought it would be useful to give a quick overview of, of the book, um, which has got the somewhat uh, kind of long and mouthful of a title of Horizontalism and Historicity in Argentina, Cultural Dialogues of the Post-Crisis Era. And um, the book considers the impact and legacy of the 2001 crisis in Argentina in cultural terms. And, and it takes as its starting point the new subjectivities of alterity that these events generated across a uh, society in Argentina, in that they brought back, um, they brought about a pulling back of, of, of the curtain, if you like, on the common sense um, in inverted commas of, of present day existence in 2001. Um, 
Ah, and these events also engendered new ways of thinking about social and, and political relations, what it means to be a citizen, and how we relate to, to others in the world. Um, so the, in the book, I identify two discursive forces as central to the development and continuity of these alternative modes of thinking. Um, and the two discourses I talk about are uh, horizontalism and historicity. Um, horizontalism in a simple definition is a non-verticalist mode of social and political organization that eschews hegemonic hierarchies in favor of collective thinking and praxis. It is, if you like, realpolitik usurped by politica affectiva, or affective politics. And in the book, I look at the social and cultural genealogy of horizontalidad in Argentina from its origins in the piquetero movements and the second generation memory work of hijos in the late 1990s to its importance um, in the, the work of the autonomous collectives that recuperated businesses and factories uh, following the, 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 the mass flight of capital in 2001, and to finally its continued articulation in the monthly magazine Mu, uh, produced by the La Vaca Collective, um, a, an independent media collective. And what I'm interested in doing in the book is, is to trace the, the, the various iterations of, of horizontalism in culture. Um, so for example, as a form of popular ontology, as history from below and in the grotesque. Um, so um, just to look at briefly historicity, the other discursive force I mentioned is central to sustaining the new structure of feeling in Williamsian terms <clears throat> that flourished during and after the crisis. Um, <clears throat> is it, so historicity is for me also crucial in the framing of this alterity and these alternative perspectives. And what I do in the book is, is try to use different forms of scholarship to articulate a concept of historicity that encompasses history and memory, and in foregrounding the past also invokes the potential of a, a conceptualization of the future as being in and of the present, rather than some golden hued sun, sunlit uplands of the years to come. And in the cultural text I look at in the book, there is a perception of the present as history, to quote Frederick Jameson, a locus where past and present, oh, sorry, where past and future come together to enable new modes of thinking. And um, this, I think, was, was what was really interesting for me when I was doing uh, my PhD research and then turning this into a book. Um, the, 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 most, the central most interesting and important thing um, um, about the research was to think about the potential generated by the events of 2001 in Argentina and their legacy. Um, and I'll just leave it at that just now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bridget. Over to you, Cara. Thank you. Uh, we've got unexpected sunshine at the moment, so I hope hopefully if I lean forward a bit, you can see me without everywhere I go, the, the sun seems to be shining, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. Anyway, thank you very much um, for the invitation to uh, to participate. And actually, it was a kind of luxury to spend a, a couple of days reading um, Bridges' book as well, and particularly because I now don't have to actually write anything on it, and I could just enjoy the kind of the, the act of reading and, and thinking about it. Um, so thank you very much. And also thank you um, as well. For, it's, it's an honor to, to speak alongside Bridget, but also um, Carlos and Ignacio as well. So I, I'm just gonna be very brief and say a few comments about the book because um, you know some of my kind of uh, thoughts uh, and the things I think are really worth, you know, worth um, talking about maybe a little bit more in the discussion. Um, but 
I also just want to say congratulations to Bridget because it's it's a really beautifully written book, but I also found it really gripping, um, not in a kind of, not quite a murder mystery sort of way, but I found I really wanted to kind of know what was happening um, on the next page. And it's that's partly because I think it's just a fantastically written book. Um, you know, it's it kind of lacks the, the real kind of, um, I suppose, over um, explaining everything and the historical content and things and I think because this is an area that there has been quite a lot of research um Bridget really goes into kind of straight in with um some of the very rich analysis um and one of the key things really the text does is as I think Bridget has alluded to there is that it sheds light on this kind of interconnectedness of society politics economics and culture over time but also across different geographies and generations and I, I think she's very wise in, in kind of considering 2001, not as a starting point or as particularly as a watershed, but really as this kind of juncture in which we see the kind of uh, convergence of past, present and future, but also one in which um, there was a considerable cultural shift, uh, one that we could argue has persisted to the, the present. And we, we could talk here and maybe we can talk more in the discussion about kind of when is the post-crisis period said to 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 end because it, there is this we could we could look at this say the post dictatorship and say the same that we still talk about post dictatorship cinema post dictatorship cultural production uh, so when does the crisis not become kind of an issue that permeates culture um, and cultural production and while I think the focus of of Bridges' work is really the the impact on the cultural sphere and certainly I would say this work is rooted in cultural studies it does shed light on this kind of complex. I suppose, dialogical relationship between the various factors that shape and are shaped by crisis, so the historical, the social, political and, and economic. And in this way, I think she's responding to, as she, as she suggests, this tendency to view art and cultural forms as outside those experiences or outside those, those um, spheres. And I think this has particular resonance in the Argentine case, the, the idea, you know, the sort of traditional idea that art and culture were seen as outside as kind of the common experience, because certainly what we've seen with the 2001 crisis is a profound cultural shift, but also an emphasis on lo popular, which I think is much more of a almost untranslatable concept to, to other contexts, but we might think about, about how, that, how that could play out. And I think this is really noticeable because while there's this tendency to view crises, and of course we all do it, the media do it, you know, we do it in terms of, um, you know, popular speech and things, to, re to refer to crisis as a moment of collapse or destruction or ruin. It is, of course, many of those things, but as Lynch indicates, or as, as Bridget's work indicates, it's also a moment of kind of rebirth in other ways or for imagining different ways of doing things. Um, and I think the texts show us um, the, the selected kind of cultural products, the um, mini series, the documentary, the feature film um, and novels as well are kind of used to explore not only their relationship to crisis and their relationship to the structures of feeling, which is kind of this thread that runs through the book, but also about the ways in which we connect to each other, that we different ways of being together, which I think have a kind of hopeful and optimistic um, slant on them um so i think um uh bridget said a little bit then about this the the kind of concepts that she uses these discursive concepts and in fact when i was reading um the book i thought it could be lots of different concepts we could use lots of others but i think it's a very smart one um to take these two as the kind of key um frames and also to try and explore that relationship um as we go and one of the things probably this is because of the area in which I work so it's probably a very predictable question from anyone that knows me is kind of why you know the kind of historical historicity as opposed to memory because many of these questions are connected to collective memory um but as I was reading it it made sense to me in many ways because I think it has given and and maybe Bridget will talk a little bit about this afterwards I think it's given her as a, as a researcher and writer, the freedom to frame many of these debates beyond historical memory or beyond the question of the dictatorship, to think about um, historical narratives and the kind of, yeah, I suppose, um, iterations and perceptions of the past in a way that in an Argentine context is often seen through a possibly a narrower frame of memory. I, I don't know. It was something that I was kind of thinking as, as I was reading. Um, and 
although I suppose one of the one of the other points that kind of came to mind was that the cultural realm in in this this um, text is defined as kind of a malleable and broad one. It incorporates activism. It incorporates uh, different cultural projects that uh, products that span discipline um, and different forms of intermediality. Because I think this intermediate quality is a really interesting one that we have music in El Canto del Tango in, in the novel, the connection between the image, but also the text in the editions of Mu, which if you have a copy of the text, I definitely invite you to spend a little bit of time looking at these fantastic reproductions of the front covers of Mu because they are really quite, quite striking. But all the while this is happening in a kind of multi-sensory, multi kind of sensory way as well, um, not just kind of placing these these texts in context or these products in context, but thinking about the the sense you know the the affective dimensions of of crisis and how they how they kind of populate and and permeate these cultural works, and what almost appears as a cultural work in itself, which is this looming urban backdrop. And I should say, not only Buenos Aires, but at times Edinburgh. Um, as well, kind of reminding us, I think, of this kind of transnational um, encounters with the works um, as well. But the surrounding cityscape, not just Buenos Aires, but the surrounding kind of barrios con urbanos, really, I, I think, serve to serve almost as kind of characters or as, as kind of, um, I suppose, another kind of dimension to the, to the kind of palimpsestic historical narratives, but at the same time uh, also work to place... Um, the, the different kind of the mini series, the documentary, et cetera, within a wider context and a wider and maybe deeper literary genealogy as well. Um, I won't say very much um, else because I think there's, there's, there's probably a lot more from, from others to say and, they, and we'll talk a little bit longer, but I, um, a few things that, that kind of came to mind and I don't actually think, you know, it's, it's not necessarily things that I have the answer for, but maybe we can leave to the discussion. Um, was this kind of question about too much, uh, I suppose it's one of the questions we have around memory all the time, too much memory, but too much um, historicity, you know, this idea of like, is there a good and bad way to use and invoke the past or do we get stuck on a loop? Um, what, you know, and I think that's the question we've had a, a, about memory, but it's also pertinent here. Um, the... Other, another kind of, uh, I suppose, question that also came to mind was um, really a, a, a really lovely bit of the text that I really, really enjoyed was some of the kind of slightly more anecdotal aspects of, of Bridget's own encounters with, um, with the works that she analyzes, sometimes by chance and sometimes through kind of seeking them out, often from, from parts of Scotland or from Edinburgh in particular. And I just wondered as well about the spaces in which these, um, the, the products she analysed or the cultural work she analysed are being encountered because obviously in some cases it may be book fairs, the cinema, the street, etc. And I wondered how that impacts on the kind of engagement with um, these types of works compared to say other forms of maybe horizontalidad like the piquetes which we encounter much more randomly and possibly in a way which is more confrontational um, as well. So I wondered how that plays into structures of, of feeling. And then very finally, the afterword, which I loved really could, because it was kind of answering questions that I'd had throughout the whole text, but really to, sort of interrogates this very complex relationship between horizontalism on one hand and the historical on the other. And in particular, uh, the book kind of comments on the more recent events and, and reactions to um, the last few years of, of kind of Macrismo, um, or, or at, at the time the book itself was published, I think. And in this case, what we see here is the the, an even kind of deeper connection in which horizontalism has itself become a kind of narrative um, of historicism itself. And, and in particular, that, that kind of, I suppose, um, leads us to reflect much more on these temporal parameters of the post-crisis. Are we now in a post-post-crisis situation? Probably, probably not. I think it would, most of those who are, are realistic and, and maybe understandably sceptical would say no. Um, but I wonder when this kind of, you know, when these these parameters could really be kind of defined, you know, with the, the texts themselves span a large, a large and longish duration of, of post-crisis period, but they pertain to issues that go back to, you know, century, look to the future as well. So it's a very kind of complex meeting of all of these um, post-crisis um, 
narratives and post-crisis questions around structures of healing. So I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much as well, Bridget, for, and congratulations for an absolutely, you know, fantastic achievement. Thank you. Thanks very much, Carla. Thank you. Thanks, Cara. Uh, now, Carlos. Thank you very much, um, Ignacio. Well, it was lovely to uh, hear you both, Bridget and Cara. And um, yes, congratulations, Bridget, for a very interesting book, uh, quite fascinating. Um, my position is is rather strange because, of course, uh, I'm I'm a I'm a somebody who has. Uh, thought about these issues, written about them, but I've also lived through them. And in this, the particular case of this book and one of its chapters, I am sort of the object of study that is now, or at least my book is. Um, so I cannot help um, um, starting from from that position. I mean, I I I, I cannot disengage myself from from that is very specific situation. Um, usually, uh, we writers. I'm going to speak now as a as a as as, as a novelist, not as a as a critic. Uh, when we either read uh, reviews or or studies that uh, touch upon our work, uh, the first um, let's say infantile reaction is 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 to to see if it's going to be a, a praise or criticism. No, and we of course gloat with the praise and and cower under the criticism. Um, but of course, this is the narcissistic and less interesting bit. And um, hopefully, um, with with the passing of time, we 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 care less and less about about those sort of polar opposites. And what we look for, even if even when we don't know it, but we know it when we find it, is. Uh, a new perspective on our own work, some, something we ourselves were not conscious of. Um, this, of course, I'm, I'm saying this under the assumption, which I hope is, is, is true, that when, when we, or at least I should say in, in my case, when I'm writing fiction, I, I usually write fiction when I'm not too sure about something, when I don't know exactly where I stand, what I feel, what I think. No, I usually say when, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm quite sure and positive about my, my thoughts and my ideas, uh, I write uh, a paper, an article, an essay, I write in the first person, but I write fiction and I see things through my characters. When I'm, when I'm torn or I'm confused or I just don't know how to tackle something. Um, and in this sense, if I had to talk, if I had, if I thought about my novel, no, La Aventura de los Justos de Eva, before reading Bridget's uh, chapter on it, I usually would say it sort of pivots or it's sort of located between two dates, two years, no, 1975, just before the military coup, and uh, at the time when the um, sort of both the workers' movement, the um, sort of guerrilla groups, both the Peronist and the Marxist, and the government of Isabel Perón and the military were sort of trying to, to see who, who could control the situation or define it. And then the year 92, which, which is the beginning of the Menem period. And it's also the, the year the, my first novel, Las Islas, takes place, which also sort of pivots between two, two dates, uh, 1982, of course, the, the Malvinas Falklands War and the first years of the Menem government. But after reading, Bridget's book, I realized it was also about 2001. That 2001 was actually the time when I was writing the novel. And how could I write about the years, you know, leading up to 2001? And having just gone through it, I mean, I was, I was just, I was checking on, on my, 
my sort of notes for the novel, the, the drafts and so on, and the, some of the first annotations go back as far as 1997. But really, the, the bulk of the, of, the, of the novel, when I was thinking about it and reading for it and doing research, which is also an, an interesting topic to, to, to go into. I'm not going to do it now, but Kara brought it up a few minutes ago. And you know, this, this difference between memory, when you've lived through something and you remember in a certain way, but then when you are start writing about it and you do research and you actually go back to the texts, the documents, the photographs of that time, and it's a very different, almost schizophrenic sometimes feeling you have Contra contrasting what you remember and what you've, what kind of version of the past your, your memory has constructed and edited and what you actually find when you go back to, to the records. Um, of course, I, I mean, I lived through the, the whole period leading up to, to um, to December 2001 here in Argentina, I was deeply affected uh, by it on a, um, not just as a member of this, of this community and society, but on a ver very, on a very personal, very private uh, way. I mean, I, I lost my house, which had a, a, a mortgage, which suddenly tripled and eventually doubled. I could say I lost my family because my, my, my marriage broke up. And it, it, I mean, obviously there were personal issues at stake, but the crisis sort of triggered the, the, the sort of the, the, end, the final the, uh, period of, of, of that process. And I think this happened to lots of people you know, in, 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 in societies which are like ours in Argentina and many other parts of the world, of course, perhaps everywhere in the world. But at particular times, the, the public, the political and the, and the private are just one narrative. They cannot be uh, separated. Uh, but I was, I was thinking um, after, again, um, reading uh, Bridget, your 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 book. Uh, in what ways, you know, the the crisis crept into the novel. I was thinking of the initial chapters where there is, a, you know, takeover of a factory by by the workers. And this character, uh, very Irish, with a very Irish name, Paddy Donovan, um, sort of is, is leading the workers. And he's, I was thinking, I was rethinking on what I wrote, and he's definitely trying to keep it horizontal, trying to merge with the workers. He comes from a sort of upper middle class background, from a posh um, bilingual school, the same, the same school as you know, the, the, the protagonist of the novel, Ernesto Marrone, and I must say the same school I went to, uh, St. Andrew's Scott School in, in Buenos Aires, and uh, how he's sort of, on the one hand, fighting the vertical structure of of the of the of the plaster works uh, itself, the, the the hierarchical structure of the of, of of the business, which they're all kept captive by the as as hostages, so so it's there in in, in place. But also, he he's not just a worker, but he responds to the Montoneros, the Peronist guerrillas, who also had a a, a completely vertical structure. Um, so this was interesting, re rethinking what I had done in terms of when I had, I was thinking and writing about it, but that process sort of illuminated by finding my novel in a, in a, in a context I myself did not um, consciously place it, which was the period, I mean, what happened during the crisis and in the immediate aftermath, the novel was, was published in 2004. So, you know, the, it is very closely linked to, to that period. 
The same thing that happened, I must say, I, di I didn't, I didn't only read the, 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 I didn't jump to the chapter concerning my novel, but uh, I, I, I read quite a few of, of, of the other chapters as well. And uh, right now, I was telling Ignacio and Bridget just before this this meeting started officially that I'm, I'm, I'm now in my my new sort of study, which is in on Avenida de Mayo, which of course is the axis where most of the at least public political manifestations that, you know, change things um, usually take place. And um, regarding what also uh, Cara mentioned, the, um, the presence of the city of Buenos Aires and other cities, and including, of course, the outer rings of the Conurbano, which in Bridget's book, and I hope in, in my own novels, it's not a backdrop, but a, a, a protagonist of the stories in, in their own right. I was uh, thinking on, on that section dealing on ontology. I don't have any, any sort of uh, ghosts explicitly in, in this novel, the La Aventura de los Gustos de Eva, but they, cer they certainly are featured in, in the novel that sort of ori originated this part of my private mythology, which is Las Islas, the island where the the, the Argentine soldiers who died in the Malvinas come back and walk through the city of Buenos Aires and comment on the changes and, and, and what, what's taken place in the city in the last 10 years. But I, I found myself looking at the city with fresh eyes, thinking, for example, of, of this, uh, well, the, the, the building I'm, 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 I'm speaking from now is Palacio Barolo, which is uh, it's gonna be a hundred years old next, next year and it belongs to the most optimistic uh, moment in, in, in the city's, let's say, planning and architecture. No, it was, it's, it's one of the most uh, beautiful buildings in Buenos Aires, one of the most literary, the architecture is based on, the, on, the, on Dante's comedy. Right now it has an interesting, uh, there, there is an interesting situation going on at ground floor, which is, um, corresponds to, 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 to hell, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from purgatory right now. I, I, maybe that affects some of my ideas as well. And um, paradise is from floor 15 upwards. I'm in, I'm in the seventh floor. But on, on ground floor level, there are two large sort of uh, spaces on both sides. One of them is being turned into, into a, a, a sort of a huge a cafe restaurant belonging to a, to a, to a chain, La Panera Rosa very successful, I think, probably not, not, not only here in Argentina. And the other side, which is closed at the moment, is supposed to belong to the sea, the, the, the state uh, secret service. Oh, so this, this sounds like, like, the, like the sort of kind of architectural um, sort of uh, scenarios I, I, I sometimes uh, think up for, for my novels. I'm, I'm quite interesting in a field which I don't know if it has it it it, it has a name. I would call it lit, literary architecture. How to how to build uh, building cities, um, neighborhoods for literature that work in writing. Um, and I thought in 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 that sense, uh, well, Bridget's chapter on El Cantor de Tango was was quite quite fantastic uh, as as well. I was thinking, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close for, for, for the moment with this. Also on this issue, uh, brilliantly uh, raised and uh, analyzed by Bridget uh, of the relationship between historicity, historicity, sorry, I was pronouncing the other, the other term in advance and horizontality. And um, thinking of another event uh, or two events that are connected in our recent past with uh, December 2001. One, we could say is a kind of, belongs to the, to the realm of ontology, an event that didn't happen in, in, in fact in the streets, but happened in, in our minds, in our hearts and activated our memory, which was the last weeks of Macri's government when everybody was expecting another Argentinazo to take place. And I was reflecting on, on the, um, also on, on something uh, which is how, uh, that's interesting to consider, how uh, memory 
and I'm, when I speak of memory, I'm restricting the term to living memory. Uh, that that, that um, process that whether individually or collectively is constantly every day, every hour, every minute, rewriting the past so that it will somehow tally with or, or not be incompatible with the present. And that is sort of, uh, I think, um, to, to, to find some simple criterion to also to, to define it and, and frame it, it uh, we can talk about it when there are people who have experienced those events and are still alive and are able somehow to sort of transmit it to the other generations. Um, and the difference with somehow memory that has be now be that has become because of you know, the, the passage of time. Um, that is now confined to written records, movies, documentaries, old newspapers, books in general. Um, I was thinking about this because I, my, my, my last book, one, one that is going into, in, in, into print, I would, would be published hopefully this year, is about um, epidemics and pandemics in literature. I, I sort of take it worldwide. But one of the hypotheses I had was that we, we found it so difficult to, to, to live through this recent pandemic, because none, I mean, there was no, nowhere there was, or maybe no, not, not nowhere, but um, in, many, in, many, in many places, in uh, Argentina being one, there was no living memory about what it was like to live through an epidemic or pandemic of these uh, proportions. So many things could not be activated. And um, my idea, which was going back to, to the books you know, that, that had uh, written, uh, where, where this was somehow, this, this memory had been uh, preserved, and the memory not only of what, what, what went on, but what was imagined, but fantasies, the, the, the fears, the paranoia. Um, and I was thinking, on the other hand, going back to, to the processes we are talking about today and Bridget's book uh, analyzes on the more or less recent event when the Supreme Court uh, ruled that the um, uh, participants uh, here in, 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 in Argentina during the dictatorship uh, in crimes against humanity would, would get the benefit of the, you know, dos por uno, no, it's just the, the years they had spent in prison before a firm sentence was pronounced, they would be computed. I mean, every year they were in prison would be computed as two. And this, as many of you know, prompted not only the, an outcry from all this, the different human rights organizations, but also Congress uh, in, in an absolutely astounding uh, record uh, brought out a new law in, le in, in, in less than 24 hours time, stating that these cases you know, where crimes against humanity were, were involved would not get this, this benefit. But more important than that, in terms of, of, of the issues we are discussing, this huge um, mobiliz mobilization demonstration all over the country no, no, on May the 10th, that is, was just a week later, in which I participated. It took place a few blocks from where I'm, I'm speaking from right now. And um, that was, I thought, a, a case where both the memory of the dictatorship uh, and the memory of the um, Argentinazo in 2001 converged and brought out this new... Uh, Pueblada, no, in, in, in which both the, the Supreme Court and the, judici the judiciary in, in, in a general sense and Macri's government were, were completely taken aback. I think even those who participated were, I mean, and I include myself, were surprised at how uh, this, this, this consensus about the, the last dictatorship is, is present and alive. And the last thing I'd, I'd like to, to, to say, which is quite obvious, but it all, always is important to say that this, um, 
form of collective memory, and, and in that one might make, a, or it would be important to, to think about differences with individual memory. It's not something that just happens. No, it's not spontaneous. Uh, but it was, it was constructed, it was created um, by the, the trials of the juntas, of course, no, by the, I mean, the, all, all the resistance against the laws that afterwards, no, the punto final, obediencia de vida, and Menem's pardon, the, the indulto, tried to go back on, but then were, of course, uh, reinstated by the, the Kirchner government. But also the thousands, tens of thousands of you know, works of investigative journalism, studies, books, El Nunca Mas, films. I like to think also novels, works of fiction, all the activism of the different organizations, of course, the, the mothers of Plaza de Mayo and the abuelas and hijos uh, 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 appear, you know, first. And how these, these events were not only sort of um, remembered as something that happened in the 70s, but were constantly being woven into the new movements, the piqueteros, the, the fablas, the the factories that were sort of taken over and or 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 other other firms like the Bowen Hotel also very close to where I'm, I'm right now. Um, and how this memory that is constructed can be uh, and is uh, activated in movements again and again when a similar sort of assaults on our rights, our dreams, our hopes, our living conditions are, are attempted or instituted. Um, and I think in that sense, um, well, once again, I'd like to, to, to congratulate uh, Bridget because it's, it's very complex to try and bring together um, all these different threads. And particularly, uh, as I sort of uh, tried to, to illustrate with a, with a, with a very brief uh, summary or list uh, just now, how, how different on how many levels um, these forms of memory are constructed and being memory have to be continually recreated and reactivated, sometimes in a more, let's say, um, at, a, at, a, at a slower, more tranquil pace, uh, and every now and then urgently, very rapidly, and this shows the capacity for, I think, reaction in, in a society, not only to react to a, a present circumstance, but the possibility of bringing up, reviving everything that has been thought, remembered, constructed, imagined in all these forms of discourse, let's call them for, for short, uh, and which uh, I think uh, one of the, you know, features in, in, in Bridget's book I, I, I valued is, is, is the, this variety, which to some at, at first might, might, might appear rather heterogeneous, uh, some kind of um, renewed example of, of Borges' famous Chinese encyclopedia. But then that's, that's the way things work, you know, with, with Chinese encyclopedias um, telling us about, you know, um, events in, in the streets of present day Argentina or any other part of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos, Cara, Bridget, for, for very insightful uh, reflections. We have a, you gave us a lot of food for thought. Um, now we can have some time for, for questions. So as I said before, you can use the chat function or if you want to, just raise your virtual hand. Okay, I will kick off while, while people have time to gather their thoughts. Um, so, I think at the turn of the 21st century, I mean, what you're describing, Bridget, that the Argentine context was not, was also like replicated 
in many countries, right? You have the Zapatistas, which you mentioned in, in Bolivia, you had uh, Qatar, uh, the Catarista movement, the indigenous movement. So there was this idea, which I think was summarized very well by, very well by John Holloway, like uh, how to change the world without taking power, right? Uh, that was a book that everybody was reading at the time. But what we saw is a reconstitution of state authority, right? And, and a lot of these affective energies were channelized or we could say captured as well, by the state in different countries. So in, the, in, 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 in relation to that, what's the legacy of that moment seen from, from now you know, uh, through a process of reconstitution of state authority, sort of neut neutralization of some of these synergies, how much of that has managed to, to to uh, persist, particularly given that in December last year, we kind of commemorated the 20, 20 years of that. You, you in the afterward, in the, in the, at the end of your book, you, you talk a little bit about sort of the 2015 uh, uh, onwards, but obviously you didn't have time to, to cover the to December 20, 2019, uh, 2021, because of obvious reasons of, of, of of uh, deadlines and and yeah, books have to be printed. Uh, so it's a question for Bridget, but for for Cara and, and Carlos as well. What's the the legacy of that since from from now? Um, I think uh, for me the 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 legacy, and it might it might sound um, kind of naive and. Um, uh, but I think I think there is a legacy of of hope, and there is a legacy of 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 a potential there, um, of, of of yeah of a potential that 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 exists of of a potential of 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 power, and and an action radical action that that exists outside the channels of of, of the state, and that may not, uh, as you say, um, you know, um, become a part of the, the kind of fabric of, of the infrastructure of the state. And in a lot of ways that's antithetical to, you know, um, the, the, the kind of um, the theoretical frameworks of, of these movements. But, um, but that, that, that it does exist as, as, as a potentiality and, and that, um, in, in, in for me as a sort of a cultural studies a, a scholar that, that you know it's um it's it, it's legacies in culture as well so so in some of the works that that, that the book looks at how 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 these encapsulate the the potential of these moments and also um you know kind of uh, have the, the possibility to invoke other po other other um, exchanges, other create other ways of of, of looking at the world, um, and I think um, you know, for example, in the UK um, during the recent lockdowns and and pandemics, we we did see a form of horizontal community organising um, um, that 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 took place, you know. Um, um, Kind of in response to the absence of the state in a, in a lot of ways, um, uh, you know, um, um, uh, food banks, um, organising lunches um, for for kids uh, who weren't at school, um, even you know, footballers calling for free school lunches, and this happens, and it, that's out. So the government responds to that, but also there there was an, a sort of sense of community that came to the fore, I think, and. Um, yeah, I, I know that that's maybe like as I say, it may seem naive, but but for me that there is that potential for hope um, that is really important. Thanks, Bridget. Yeah, I suppose one of the legacies as well. I think I, I, I agree. I think in terms of as well, Carlos mentioned the the dos por uno. Um, protests and I think there is something to learn from when you look at say hijos and the scratches that you have this um you know which Bridget talks a little about in her her book that there was a period after the repeal of the um of the leyes de impunidad by the supreme court that there was a kind of oh well scratches are going into this kind of uh, abeyance or going into temporary hiding but 
you know, they are there to be used again when needed. And what we saw was that when we've seen questions around kind of um, the, um, what was it, what's the word, like um, the VIP prisons, questions around the treatment of reprosaurus and things that are on trial and the fact that all of the kind of obstacles to attaining truth and justice in its kind of truest and deepest sense, you know, these scratches kind of were re, you know, reappeared in the city as well. You know, they hadn't been away for very long. So I think there is this kind of change in the dynamics of, of, of as Bridges said, horizontal organising. But, but very briefly, I'd say, I think one of the legacies we can see beyond Argentina, I think the transnational kind of dimension, you know, the invocation of Pesevash and Todos in, in Greece, in Iceland, the use of Casarolasos in various European countries, scratches in Spain for different, mobilised differently. I think so much of the, in, you know, in, in kind of cultural studies, especially work on memory, which I won't keep going back to, but is a little bit about how it travels from Anglophone or from Europe to the South, to Argentina. Whereas what we see with a lot of activism and organising is it's the opposite. And even recently we were talking about even the use of the word femicide or feminicide in English, which you wouldn't have heard as anywhere near as much in this context. I, I wonder how much of that is in relation to, to places where feminicidio, feminicidio has been evoked as a kind of term to, to, you know, to rally for legal abortion, to rally against, in, in the case of Ni Una Menos in Argentina. So I wonder if some of the legacies of the crisis and, and in terms of organising and community organising horizontal activism and invoking the past have actually been beyond, beyond Argentina. Um, yeah, what I what I think um, I I might add again, taking up um, Bridget's uh, optimism, which which I share, is that when um, let's say the state or a, or a specific government uh, co-opts a certain specific popular horizontal movement or uprising. Um, it doesn't new, just neutralize it, it absorbs it. And when it, it absorbs it, it, it somehow is formulated, formulating um, or entering, whether they will want to acknowledge it or not, a, a certain promise. That is, uh, we might say that the, um, to mention probably the most um, talked about, written about, mythical, uh, collective, popular uprising in Argentine history, the 17 de Octubre, uh, 1945. Uh, you might say that was, that was somehow horizontal uh, and with an element, uh, not maybe necessarily spontaneous, although the word spontaneous is, was and is still used a lot to describe it. And of course, af afterwards, the Peronist a government that arose from after that uh, event when Peron was, was won the elections, uh, incorporated all the unions into, into the state structure, in, into a series of, of power um, structures and, and vertical organization. But Peronism, at least classical Peronism, could never go back on that alliance. It, could, it couldn't turn against the unions. No? Uh, in a similar way, when the Kirchner government makes the um, human rights um, policies and all the, the struggle against the dictatorship and for justice of the mothers, the, the abuelas, uh, and, and so on, in, into state policy. Well, if, if they went back on that, I mean, they would either fall or lose legitimacy. So... It's a process that has been much debated, uh, but I, I see it as positive. Also, if we, if we think not of the state as a permanent structure, but of the different governments, well, of course, what, what goes into a more tranquil mode, as Cara was just is speaking about the scratches with one government, let's say the Kirchners, when the sort of human rights and memory policies were had sort of uh, um, guarantee um, from, from the state when we move on to the Macri uh, government, they could, all, all those practices could be mobilized against the, the new government. Uh, and also the, the new, I mean, the, we must remember talking about once again, the, um, the dos por uno, that even, even the, in, both in the um, sort of 
in, in, in both houses of Congress, the, 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 the representatives of Macri's party voted this law because they, they, they realized that uh, this kind of, of um, opposition was, was uh, impossible to, to, to go against. Uh, when a society has um, the, the dynamics, the gymnastics for, for, you know, to, to, for taking the streets, and this is something that, again, I go back to this idea of living memory. It, it has never disappeared in, in Argentina. It didn't start in 1945. I would, I would um, take it 25 years earlier to the Semana Tragica and the, the strikes in Patagonia, which were in those times led by the anarchist uh, organizations. But after that, you have, you have that in the 20s, then Peronism in the, in, in the 40s, then the resistance against the dictatorship and the, and the Cordobazo in the late 60s. So it has never dropped out from practice. Every generation has inherited it and has participated in, in, in that. So I imagine what would happen if, let's say, this is an exercise in, in, in let's say, political fiction, but that's what, what, I, what I do. Uh, what would happen if um, in, the, in the US you had a, a, a similar tradition? What would happen now with the overturning of Roe versus Wade? Whether it could take place, as, as it obviously is going to take place, um, in, a, in countries, not in a country like Argentina, there are very many, that have uh, established these dynamics as part, uh, as a permanent feature of their political life. Great, thanks. Um, I think we have a bit of time. We can stay a few more minutes, right? Um, any questions, observation, comments from the audience to the speakers, for the speakers? Well, it's a very quiet audience. I think that they need to process a lot of information. <laughs> But um, I think we can, if everything is okay, we can finish on time. I think it will be a, a, a quite a, a, an accomplishment managing to squeeze uh, very interesting contributions and on top of that, finishing on time. So once again, I would like to uh, thank everybody, particularly Bridget, Carlos, uh, Cara, and hopefully we will have another um, uh, occasion which we can continue some of these debates perhaps in a few years and reflect a little bit more on 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 some of the issues that uh, are happening at the moment that as you very well mentioned connect very directly even if sometimes we don't really realize it with the changes uh, political economic but particularly cultural which i think are very long lasting and and you you uh discuss so well bridget okay um, Thank okay. you. Thanks again to everyone. Thank you.